everybody. Again, thanks for joining us for talk two of the day. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. I think some people may still be hopping on, but we'll we'll get going because I know Ray's got some cool stuff to talk about. So hello again and welcome to the global. Oops, sorry, that's my mom. Welcome to the Global Primatology Virtual <laughs> Conference hosted by Central Washington University. My name is Carson and I'm going to be moderating this session today. This session is with Raymond Vagel. And before we start, I wanted to let you all know that this session will be recorded. If you do not want to be recorded, then you can turn off your camera. Additionally, to make this a fun learning experience for everyone involved, I'm going to request that we all follow a few session rules. One mic, one voice, only one person speaks at a time. Respect all identities. This includes pronouns, nationalities, ethnic groups, etc. This is a safe space, so don't feel discouraged. All are welcomed to engage and ask questions. One question only, out of respect for others in time, please stick to just asking one question. Only speak for yourself and no one else. No name yes. calling or derogatory comments or questions of any kind. Failure to comply with this will result in your termination from the session. And keep the chat clear of traffic, only use it to propose questions. And now that we're all on the same page, I'm going to introduce Raymond Vagel. His pronouns are he, his, and him. He's a PhD student at Texas State University in the Applied Anthropology Department, and he's also one of the board members of Primarily Primates in San Antonio, Texas. Um, and with that, Ray, I'm going to let you take it away. Okay, well, thank you uh, for coming to the talk. I'm very excited and happy to share with you my volunteering work uh, and, uh, at the sanctuary. So, Primarily Primates. So, um, as uh, Ash, uh, Carson said earlier, I'm a primatologist, a PhD student at the Texas State University. And so I'm here today to talk to you about primarily primates in the capacity of a, a volunteer and a board member. I started supporting the sanctuary about uh, over 10 years ago. Uh, I think that was when uh, Twitter kind of started. Um, I'm kind of old like that. Twitter kind of started and we saw, and I saw this tweet about, you know, we just rescued a bunch of macaques from a lab. Um, we need people to name them and we need people to sponsor them. And that sort of like ignited something in me. And it's like, I, you know, I, I want to help. I want to do something. Um, so I sponsored one of their macaques. Uh, I named him Kura. Uh, Kura in Malay means actually macaque. And so it's sort of like a play on where I'm sort of proud of my, my Malaysian uh, heritage and that. And so I've been, you know, uh, active for five years. Um, and then they invited me to join the, uh, the board. And so currently I'm a board member of the sanctuary. I also do some kind of consultation for them for free. Uh, sometimes when they take in primates, I will help in the introductions of the primates. Uh, I'll help with their enrichments and, um, you know, all this to say that, you know, the, the reason why I am part of the sanctuary is because as a primatologist, like, I, I really want to give back, you know, I study captive primates and I've benefited a lot from primates in captivity, but we really don't think about what happened to primates in captivity after we're done with the research, after they're done um, with um, you know, long-term lab research, what happens to them? They go to a sanctuary and we really need to somehow help them have a better life or, you know, have, have live, live the rest of their lives um, in the sanctuary. A brief history of our sanctuary, primarily primates. So we are located in San Antonio, Texas, United States of America, if you're not from here. Um, we were founded in 1978, and we are one of the earliest primate sanctuary in North America. We were one of the first that uh, rescued chimps uh, to be brought into the sanctuary for lifetime care. Currently, we are caring for apes, monkeys, lemurs, and as our sanctuary name suggests, primarily primates, we do have uh, birds and farm animals that we rescue as well. 
So where are our residents from? Um, we know that a lot of uh, primates from biomedical labs, when they're done with the research or when the lab is closed, um, they got sent to us, oh, we rescue them, we, we bring them uh, into our sanctuary. We also take in animals from roadside zoos, zoos that had to close down or um, from the ent entertainment industry, especially chimpanzees who we used to be trained to do um, TV shows, um, star in movies, those sort of things. Um, they, they retire in our sanctuary. And lastly, and most importantly right now, I want to talk about are the former pets. You know, we go on social media, we always tell people do not share these pictures of primate pets, do not engage, because what happens to these pets after, you know, people are, after they grow up, after these baby uh, primates grow up, they're not photogenic on social media anymore, what happened to them? Um, and so we get pets, uh, two types of pets, uh, the pets that are surrendered to us are former uh, pets that the owners can't take care of, unable to take care of, or basically just say, I'm done with this, with this primate, you can have it. Uh, and then we also do rescues. So rescues are primate pets that either escaped or has been dumped somewhere. Um, they lived out in the wild for a little bit and people find them. and. Uh, We'll, we'll meet some of these, uh, these, these uh, residents uh, in part of my presentation. And so I talked about Kura earlier. Kura is one of the macaques that was part of a biomedical lab in New Jersey that uh, shut down and we brought Kura and all the other macaques back to primarily primates uh, 10 years ago. Um, this project is called the Project Monkey Trek. You'll learn more about this in the video uh, presentation uh, later in this, in this talk. Uh, people that know me knows I, I do research with rough lemurs. Uh, so these are red rough lemur and black and white rough lemur. Aludra uh, came to the sanctuary because she retired from a zoo and sex, the black and white rough lemur, was a former pet uh, who was uh, surrendered to the sanctuary. So when we first got them, um, they did not like each other at all. So we had them separate in uh, separate enclosure. And I came in and helped uh, introduction of these two. And right now they are living happily together in the same enclosure. Uh, if you work with rough lemurs, or if you've seen rough lemur, uh, people will say that, you know, if you look at a picture, uh, you can hear it. So if you, they, when they first met each other, it was not a fun time for the lemurs or the, the people around them. But um, right now they are uh, having so much fun in their enclosure and uh, the introduction was a success. Skeeter, so Skeeter uh, is one of my favorite macaque at the sanctuary. He's a pigtail macaque. Um, Skeeter came to us as a surrender. Uh, he was a former pet. For the first 10 years of his life, he lived in a parrot cage. Um, he has never walked outside of the parrot cage before. Uh, his previous owner fed him Cheetos, junk food, I think it was Taco Bell. Um, and his enrichment was watching um, TV with um, his, his uh, owner. So he's in the sanctuary right now. He, it's his first time actually touching ground. He's really excited about it. Um, and he, he is having an amazing time at the sanctuary right now. Um, but he loves bananas. He loves getting back scratches. Um, that's also, you know, I want some of these animals, um, they don't exhibit what we call natural primate behaviors because they were expats. And so uh, these behaviors are not natural, but it's, it's, it's something that like they're used to. Phoenix is our ringtail uh, lemur that was, uh, we, we got a call from one of the San Antonio Animal Hospital. Uh, Phoenix was surrendered to the animal hospital. She was a former pet and she lived with her owner and their dogs. She was, her right arm was mauled, her right hand was mauled by, by the dogs um, because they were, the dog was food aggressive and she was trying to get food from the dog. And so the owner surrendered the lemur to the animal hospital and said, please euthanize this lemur, I don't want it anymore. Um, because 
nothing happened to the, to the arm. So we got a call, we rescued Felix. Uh, we had a campaign um, uh, asking donations so that we can do a surgery with Phoenix. Uh, so Phoenix's right uh, hand is amputated, but she's living a great life right now at the sanctuary. Uh, very, very feisty, just like a female ringtail lemur should be. Uh, our, we have uh, chimps in our sanctuary. Bubba is one of my favorite chimp. Um, he came from the entertainment industry. He came in, um, he's been, been with us for a very long time. And as you can see in this picture, he gets um, a lot of enrichment that we give him. You get food enrichment, you get uh, object enrichment. Um, but Bubba's favorite enrichment is shoes. So Bubba loves shoes. And when I say Bubba loves shoes, like he loves shoes. And he, when he, whenever he gets like a new pair of shoes, it's the most exciting thing for him. And then he'll spend the whole day just playing with that, with that shoe. I want to introduce some of our uh, geriatrics as well. Uh, at the beginning of the talk, I told you about, you know, we have some of these animals came in um, spending the rest of their life with us. Uh, or we, we had our first, or one of our first sanctuary that brings in uh, chimpanzee to live uh, the rest of their lives with us at the sanctuary. Uh, Corky, the Puchin, Buffy the chimp, and Junior uh, the gibbon. So they are all over 40 years old, uh, still doing amazing at the sanctuary. At the sanctuary, we give our primates uh, enrichments to, you know, have them stimulate their mind, relief boredom. And so they get food reward as, uh, as a result of the enrichment, but we also get paintings out of it. So you can see here, uh, the string tail lemur, uh, we pour like raisins and stuff around it and we'll just walk around the, this canvas right here and they'll, they'll create a painting. The chimps love to paint. Uh, you know, you can buy chimp painting from us as well as, you know, them being in enclosure, we include some sort of um, natural objects around them. And if you study capuchins, so you know something about capuchins, um, capuchins use stone tools. Um, they would use uh, rocks as, as tools. And so sometimes we have rocks around the enclosure and to elicit some sort of natural behavior. You see this video with Clay. Yeah, you see her like using this little rock and sort of like you know, eliciting this, this uh, stone use, uh, stone tool sort of behavior. And so how can you help our sanctuary? I told you a little bit about myself, I told you about our, fat, our animals in the sanctuary. And so, you know, we, we need help because, you know, we don't really get funded that much. And we rely on our uh, funders, people that like our sanctuaries, people that have had their pets sent into our sanctuary, have their animals sent, sent into our sanctuary, we rely on your donation to keep operations. So what can you do? There are some fun things that you could do at a sanctuary. Um, so like what I did, you can sponsor individual animals at the sanctuary. We'll send you a picture of them, we'll give you updates. Um, or other fun things that you could do is actually you can sponsor a fruit party. So what a fruit party does is that you can um, sponsor uh, a party for the animals, specific uh, specific fruits for them. And so during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic last year, uh, I couldn't really do anything for my birthday. So my husband threw a fruit party uh, for the lemurs. And so they made this fruit cake with my picture in it. And um, the, the lemurs had an amazing time. Uh, they live streamed the event. It was, it was great. You can also do uh, certain time of the year, like Christmas or you know any, anything that you want, a special event, we can do these uh, fruit party enrichment. And you see Aludra here, um, she had her Christmas tree uh, fruit ornament uh, party. So this is super fun, um, something that you can do. You don't have to be in Texas. We can live stream this to you and visit our website, primarilyprimates.org uh, to find out more. Other things that you can do to help us is that you can support us during Giving Day for Eight. So people that don't know about this uh, charity event, it's an annual charity event where on a specific day, 
you would donate to a specific a sanctuary. And then at the end of the day, they tally how much you get. So sometimes um, the, the sanctuary that gets the most donation uh, would win certain monetary prize or like at a certain hour, uh, how much you fundraise, uh, you'll win things like that. You can also buy primate art from us. Uh, as I've shown you earlier, one of the enrichment they do is paintings. So you can buy uh, primate paintings from us, like these over here. Uh, for Valentine's Day, sometimes we will have uh, primates paint these heart-shaped ornaments you can buy. We also do Christmas ornaments as well. And then what other things can you do if you don't want to, uh, you know, spend money? You can come volunteer at, a, at the sanctuary if you live in Texas. If you don't live in Texas, you could always use somebody to, like, work on our social media or our website. You know, as long as you have the time and you want to help, we, will, we, can, we can use your help. And so I want to uh, end this presentation on a, a more serious note. Uh, if, you've, if you lived in the United States or you've known about this, um, the 2021 winter, Texas winter storm that happened last month really hit us you know, really bad. This is a historic winter storm. We did not expect this snow in Texas. Uh, so we were not, we were not prepared. And, and we were not prepared, not because you know, in the sense that, you know, we're not prepared. It's more like we didn't realize it's going to snow and that we have about 24 hours to evacuate every single animal out of our sanctuary. Um, so we saved a lot of them. We took, we got a lot of them out of the sanctuary. And I personally want to thank uh, San Antonio Zoo, SeaWorld San Antonio, um, all the volunteers who actually took in our animals and kept them safe during this uh, snowstorm. But unfortunately, you know, we've lost some animals. This is very unfortunate and we don't want this to happen and we cannot let this happen ever again. And so we, so we are um, starting a uh, project to basically upgrade our infrastructure and so we are buying diesel diesel driven generators instead of rel relying on this old crumbling Texas electric infrastructure that we actually, I personally am going to tell you, we cannot rely on. Uh, so far, we are about at two thirds of our fundraising goals. And so if you would like to help, please go to our website, um, donate to us. Uh, we don't really have a specific campaign going on. So when you're on a website, um, anything that you donate, that money will go into the upgrade because that is um, the most important thing uh, we need to do right now. Um, and also thank you to all the staff at the sanctuary. Um, they worked before, during, and after the snowstorm. Some of them actually just slept at the sanctuary for a few days. Um, and when I, then thank you. Um, so, um, so before I end this talk and before we go into the uh, video presentation, I want to acknowledge that primarily primate is located on the ancestral land of the Turtle Island. And if you don't know, if you're outside of North America, um, Turtle Island is what we call uh, North America. And that the sanctuary sits on the lands of the uh, Jumanos, Tonkawa, the Lipan Apache, and uh, the Coahuitepan tribes. And I want to thank you, everybody here, uh, for coming to my talk. Thank you again to the staff at the Primarily Primates and uh, Andy Cochran, who directed and produced uh, this video that you will be watching. Uh, you can roll the video. Do we want to take any questions, Ray, or will you be on here after the video as well? I'll be here after. Okay, perfect. I will roll the video.
questions and you can either shoot them directly to me. You can put them for everyone to see in the chat or you can raise your hand and we'll unmute you as co-hosts. Jenna. Hi, Raymond. Um, I just wanted to thank you for your talk today. Um, it was super great. And I'm sorry about everything you guys have gone through with the winter storm. Um, I was curious. I know you guys were one of the sanctuaries that were getting some of the chimps that are um, at wildlife way station. I was just curious if you guys have already gotten that group or if that's still yet to come in the future. That's a great question. I actually, I am not sure about that. I'm, I don't really deal with that, that side, but I can look it up and let you know. I think you're muted. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't know if it was, um, if you guys were 1 of the facilities that got the primate or the chimps over a year ago, like in the 1st group. Um, but there, I think there's like 30. 30 something chimps left still waiting for a home. So I was wondering if you guys were. Uh, one of those. I think. If I remember correctly, we might have gotten like the 1st wave. I'm unsure if we have gotten any more. Like in 2020, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, I missed it. Nirmal, you should be good to go as soon as I unmute you. Yeah. Or if you can unmute yourself. Oh, yeah, good. You're good. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Raymond, for such a good talk. And uh, uh, you're putting a lot of effort there uh, doing all that uh, thing. So I, I have just one thing in mind. So. I would like to ask your views about it that nowadays uh, we see a lot about um, we see people feeding animals or specifically uh, monkeys and chimps they are keeping them at their home and they're making them wear diapers and habituating them with the lifestyle of humans so it's good it's good if uh, you have rescued a monkey and it, and you are taking care of it but I would like to ask you how you see it because if I have a monkey and He's alone with me. Uh, maybe I'm giving a good foster care to it, but uh, uh, I won't be able to understand so much thing about about the animal um, there. So the animal needs to be in space with uh, uh, animals like him, or uh, yeah, but in a natural habitat, I guess, in which he sh uh, he or she is raised. So how you see it? Like a sanctuary is good uh, because. Uh, yeah, you guys are there uh, taking care of them, but at home, if we, uh, if somebody has an animal, so how how you see these things? Because uh, if I see it, uh, I would say that if I'm liking a picture uh, uh, of a capuchin monkey wearing a diaper, and I think it's funny, and I'm sharing it, and I'm liking it, my share and like it's it's giving a push to that kind of activity. So how? So uh, unconsciously, even if uh, I guess I'm contributing to something bad, I guess. So how how you see it? A uh, great question, actually. Uh, very loaded question. Uh, so uh, I think I probably see it the same as you. Um, you know, I do not think that people should have pet monkeys. I do not think people should be dressing up their monkeys. Um, and I don't. I do think you should be sharing uh, on social media all of these unnatural like primate behaviors or pictures of like primates getting dressed up, um, things like that. So I 100% uh, agree with you, Nirma. Um, some of my colleagues have done work on this, uh, perception on primate pets and wanting um, a pet of their own uh, on social media. Um, so you can definitely Google that. Um, there are papers out like that, but I 100% agree. Um, however, I wanna, I wanna give a caveat in this, however, um, there are people that are re, uh, rehabilitators, so they're not not uh, a, a pet owner per se, right? So they their role is to um, somehow otherwise uh, help a monkey survive something, or uh, an infant an infant primate that was rejected by the mother um, 
there's some sort of like a human intervention. So you see like a little gray area there, but I still don't think that those people, if you are doing that in that capacity, I don't think that you should share pictures um, of what's happening. Um, well, as long as like, you know, sort of like following this, this guideline of like not normalizing having a, a primate as pet. Carlton, uh, can I can I extend? I I just uh, have a thing to say. Can I say it? Yeah, because absolutely. I already asked my question. Yeah. No, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I I just it's a thought. It's a, I think it's a change of perspective of thoughts because I don't want uh, to offend anybody. But I'm sorry if I offend anybody because uh, how I see it, I just it just came up in my mind like. We used to play with stuffed toys when we were kids. We all did. Yeah, but when we grew up, I think we are evolving. Humans are evolving uh, cognitively. Like we are getting bored of stuffed toys because they don't talk back or they don't behave. They We just get bored of them. So how I see people petting animals, uh, on their side, they're doing great. They are so rescuing animals and all. But how I see it, it's like... I don't want to materialize animals because I know people don't materialize them. They could take good care of them, look after them, sleep with them. They take them to work. But I guess it's like, I think we are bored of stuffed toys and we are keeping animals just as a source of entertainment. I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody here, but, but it's, it's just a change of perspective and just a different thought, I guess. So it could be debatable, but yeah. I think one one should uh, think about it. Yeah, that was all bring, discussion. Thank you. Yeah. I think you bring bring up a really great point that you know we should address is that you know we we are sort of attracted to these uh, primates, um, but these are all instant gratification, right? So I mean, not instant as in like a short period of time of gratification. You they're cute, so it's sort of like you know you are um, having this gratification of being in proximity of a cute animal, being able to interact with it, you can share on social media. It's all great and fine. Usually these are, are, are baby or infant primates, right? What happens when they grow up? Like that, there's a disconnect with the fact that once you get an animal, that's like for life, right? Exactly. Like, okay, fine, you own a primate. Like you need to think about what happened from beginning to the end. And I think this this sort of disconnect is the reason why sanctuaries are flooded with uh, ex pets. Yeah. Thank you, Raymond, and best of luck with your efforts there. Thank you. Anybody else? Ray, correct me if I'm wrong. How many animals did you guys say? How many animals do you have at the sanctuary right now, currently? Oh, we have like hundreds. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, sometimes we get like a lot of birds as well. So for like primates, we have we have uh, hundreds. I have a question in the chat for you, Ray. Um, okay. Is it legal in the United States to have primates as pets? So uh, it depends on uh, certain states. So we see states like Texas. Uh, as I am not like a law professor, but as far as I know, um, Texas and North Carolina do not have uh, a law that make you not be able to get a primate pet. So it's perfectly legal to have a primate pet in Texas and uh, North Carolina. I think I'm seeing a, a question from chat.
Do you see them, Carson, or should I read it up? They, they, I don't think whatever, whoever just sent one didn't send it directly to me. So it might just be on your end. Go ahead and you can go ahead okay. and answer if you feel comfortable. Okay. So uh, I have something from Anna Grulik. Grulich, Grulich. Do you see many behavioral differences between animals rescued from different settings? Have you had to have different approaches for animals rescued from these research settings versus entertainment settings slash former pets? Um, Anna, yes, definitely. Um, we see a lot of former pets, former, uh, most of the former entertainment industry are more uh, attached to humans. Whereas the animals from laboratory, laboratory settings uh, or research setting is at the beginning, um, tends to be fearful of humans, trying to, trying to uh, uh, um, stay away from humans. Um, but also in these two different settings, they have two different uh, behavioral problems. Uh, uh, it's just, you know, it's just the way they were, they were brought up. Uh, uh, you see different behavior problems, especially the ones that live in uh, much smaller cages. And so they need to adjust to uh, uh, living in a, in a bigger space, living with other uh, uh, conspecifics. I have another question from Keith Chan. What has been your most rewarding experience at the sanctuary? Um, so I have a few, but I wanna, I wanna, I wanna uh, tell you a really cute one. Uh, Corky, the capuchin that you saw earlier, the uh, geri geriatric capuchin. Um, so every time I'm at the sanctuary, I try to find him and he's just super cute and he makes us like the cutest chirp. <laughs> uh, so I'll bring him like grace and he'll just like sit next to me and I'll just like, as if like he's talking to me, but then he'll just go chirp, 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 chirp. And it's super cute. Um, but but the, the, the most rewarding experience really as a primatologist as somebody who does research with captive primate is that I am sort of helping um, other primates just have a, a, a better life after you know they're they're done with research. I have a question for you from Charlotte King. What procedures do you have in place to monitor the primates' welfare post rescue? Do you have formal strategies? Uh, that. I would have to ask the staff. I, I don't know about that. Um, again, I, I I am mostly a volunteer, so I don't. I'm not really in the the, the hands-on part of the uh, sanctuary. But I can ask that, and I can relay that info back to you. Um, if uh, if anybody's on Twitter, um, I, I have my Twitter handle here. Definitely shoot me uh, a DM or just tweet me, and I'll, I'll get back to you. We just put your Twitter in the chat so that people can find you easily. Great. Does anybody else have any questions? If there are no other questions, and Ray, if you don't have anything else that you would like to share with us, we can go ahead and wrap this one today. There will be some pre-recorded sessions that are airing at 12 o'clock Pacific time, so feel free to tune into those. Oh, do we have a question? I see someone physically raising their hand. Susan, go ahead and unmute yourself, and then you can ask away. Just, I'm just wondering if um, if this is being recorded, and and I can go to a link later to see. I'd love to see that video again. Ashton. Oh, she's muted. We can't hear you, Ashton. Okay, wait, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. I had to change what kind of microphone my computer was using. 
anyway, um, that video is actually already up on YouTube. Um, so Raymond had sent that to me previously. If you just search global primatology virtual conference on YouTube, you'll find all of the links on there. And you can also follow our social media, which is on Facebook, the Primate Awareness Network, and then um, different variations of that on other social medias. We've been posting the links every day so that people can make sure they can access them. But this session, the Q&A and everything was also recorded, and I have been uploading them around like 10 a.m. the day after. Okay, so where, I'm sorry, where can I see the links like on YouTube and... Yeah, so if you go to YouTube and type in Global Primatology Virtual Conference, mm -hmm. you will get a playlist of all of the, the sessions. And then I can share the link right now in the chat. Great. Oops. Great, thank you. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming to this. What a great turnout. And Raymond, thanks so much for taking the time. And we know it's been it's been difficult so cool. down there. So thank you for sharing with us. And um, thank you everybody for coming. We'll see you at noon.